Hello, greetings and welcome to the fifth installment of the Noise Blast Hour brought to you by Noise Engineering. I'm your host, Sean Jimerson. Hello and welcome. The Noise Blast Hour is a variety series of sporadic release and indeterminate continuance and indeterminate length because I talk a lot. Today's guests are Arthur Natek and Olan, who will be performing together. Uh, Arthur Natek is an amazing drummer, composer, and electronica artist, and Olan is an awesome modular uh, live set artist who does really long-form evolving sets. Uh, they're going to collaborate, like I said, and they'll be interviewed together as well. And also joining us today is the amazing Coffin Nachmar, who is a yo-yo expert and performer, as well as a musician and artist who has his own line of yo-yos and makes his own art and toys and that sort of thing. Uh, let's see here. At the time of this live stream, the Desmodus Versio just dropped from Noise Engineering, which is the mainly reverb module, uh, but also gets into delay territory and some stuff in between, which I'm very excited about. Um, we also have a tip jar set up for the artists uh, that we have here for the Noise Blast Hour. So if you're enjoying what you're hearing and seeing, feel free to drop a tip in there. This goes directly to them. Um, if you're enjoying this series, please subscribe to them so you're aware of when they're happening and, and always get to see them. Uh, if you are joining us, uh, and this is the archive you're watching, this was recorded in August of that oh-so-mellow year of 2020. So anyway, let's move right along here. We uh, are going to get into it with Arthur Natek, Olan, and Coffin Nakmar. Thank you so much for joining the fifth installment of the Noise Blast Hour. I hope you enjoy.
All right, welcome. We're here with Arthur Nantek and Olan, and thank you for being here with us and performing for us on the Noise Blast Hour. We're excited to have you. Uh, welcome. How are you? Good. Very good. Good. Thanks, yeah. Thanks for uh, for having us. Yeah. I guess. Thank you. Of course, for uh, our listeners, Arthur Nantek is a drummer, composer, and electronica artist, and Olan is a modular live set artist and techno DJ. You were both in Switzerland, yes? Yes. Yes. And that's where you are right now, yeah? Yes, we're yeah. in my little shared flat in Zurich. Yeah. Fantastic. And how did you two come to collaborate with each other? I think they're through friends, I, I think. There were, um, I also studied jazz and did jazz music for a while, but then drifted away into psychedelic rock. And all, 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 um, I always at the same time made electronic at first, but then went straight into techno. But at the same time, I still have a lot of friends who are active musicians in bands. And through friends of ours, we met. I'd yeah, say. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And you both have degrees in jazz, yes? <laughs> yes, we do. It's yes. funny to think about this, but yeah, yeah, we kind of both went through this pretty school-ish thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You you also have a master's degree? No, I actually don't. Oh, no. I went. I actually did my uh, up until some time, and then I moved to New York City, and I did my my bachelor in jazz music in at the new school in New oh, York. Oh, okay. So I kind of left Switzerland a bit before yeah. that. And you were probably, with your bachelor's, you were probably already pretty active as a working musician. Yeah, in the US, it's a bit less. It felt less like a, I don't know, important step. And mm. I, I started kind of playing with, with this Armenian piano player called Tigran Hamasyan, basically while I was still in school. So the concept of going further in my studies was kind of like, kind of shut down by the fact that I was immediately playing with him. Mm. But mm. so no, actually I'm, I'm under degree, <laughs> but you have a master, no? Yeah, I have a master's in uh, jazz composition. So yeah, you were theory. higher than me. <laughs> and now I'm making music in 4-4, which has to be <laughs> loud. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. I think it's pretty cool though. I yeah. think it's pretty cool. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. So Arthur, your work with uh, Tigran Hamasian is amazing. I really love the. It's I, I lo what I really like about it is how you can't dump it into any sort of genre. It seems like he's pulling from so many different places. It feels like Indian classical rhythms sometimes. Maybe I'm mistaken, but uh, and he's got. Uh, you know, almost like a gent metal influence in his piano playing and. When you're performing with him, are you looking at charts, or is it sort of you can do whatever you want, or somewhere in between? How does that, how does that work out? Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty tricky situation actually in his band, meaning that, that he comes really from the jazz tradition first. You know, that's what like not a lot of people know, but he can he can play tr more traditional jazz incredibly. So he comes from that, but he was growing up listening to Meshuga and. And, you know, other, you know, so all the kind of like complicated uh, rhythmical stuff comes also from that influence of metal and, you know, prog rock and stuff like that. Sure. But then it, it comes out through this Armenian folkloric melodies. So it's kind of crazy mix, like you said. Yeah. But uh, the way he gives us the music is actually all by ear. You no, know, he, he really doesn't go through so much by writing down stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, we we get, we are lucky that we actually perform a lot. I mean, we used to. There was a moment where we were on tour all the time, so he could kind of write new stuff and teach it to us while we were going on. And so, wow. yeah. So all the, that music is not really specifically written down, but it's completely composed. So even though we are all jazz people, when it comes to his music, there's not so much uh, improvisation. There are moments. There are mostly live there's pockets of moments where we can all play whatever we want but the actual compositions what you hear on the albums is kind of a hundred percent him you know he comes up with all the drum parts too <laughs> and you also play with uh the eric trufas quartet as well is that yeah. a whole different 
feeling. I mean, it, it's, his music seems a little more almost like uh, reminiscent of John Hassel, but with a bit of a groove going on to it to me. Is that more of a free situation or? Yeah, that's it. For me as a drummer, it's the almost the complete opposite, meaning that the compositions are really simple. There's really a few information there and it's all about playing it together on stage. And so, yeah, they, this band uh, exists for a while and they used to, they played with the same drummer for a long time and they kind of come from this tradition of also of using kind of drum and bass and all that like style of beats in jazz, mm -hmm. but it's still very simple, um, let's say forms, you know? So it's for me as a drummer there, I can just go full and play whatever, <laughs> which is fun. It's a, it's a cool different approach to, to, yeah, to, to music. Right. Oh, yeah. Sure. Olan, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, we live in this world of one minute Instagram videos and, everything competing for our attention and you're doing these very long form evolving sets that are kind of uh, go against that trend in a good way. I, I really enjoy it. Is it a conscious decision for you to make really long evolving pieces like that? Mm, in a way, yes, but the idea is more, I, I have, um, the thing is, I don't really, I'm not really good at, at social media. So I just do whatever is fun for me. Sure. And then I put it on the internet. I was actually really surprised how, how it got a little bit of attention, my channel. I didn't, I didn't expect that. And with, yeah, with the forms, you know, it's techno music in general. It's just, it's a different, it, for me, it gives a lot of room to, to, to evolve something, you know, a good party goes on for hours and hours and hours, and you're not sitting there listening. The whole experience of a, of a techno party is, is the thing, you can talk to people, you can, you can dance, you can do whatever you want. You're free in this little space for, for a set amount of time. And yeah, I, I was living uh, uh, in Berlin for a year and every, uh, I lived five, five minutes from Berkheim. So I went there almost every Sunday and it changed my mind also a little bit because the sets are four hours, not wow. even, even, even really long live sets from time to time. The live sets are, are shorter, usually one to two hours or something. But yeah, I just, I like this room. Me personally, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who is really, I get bored really quickly. I, I always have to do something. I have to fill my, my schedule to be happy. And then the techno thing, the parties playing myself or being a guest just is this little, you know, just letting, yeah, just, just breathing. Yeah. Cool. I think. So when you guys play together, there's, there's some uh, ability for crosstalk between your setups. Yes. You have some triggers, I believe on, on Arthur's drums that feed into your, and even some, uh, I thought you, you guys used maybe contact mics or something like that on some of your stuff. So you're getting actually, so Olan, you're getting audio from Arthur and you're kind of feeding off of each other in a kind of feedback sort of way. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess, sorry, yeah. I was mm -hmm. gonna say, how did you guys come to that and how long have you been doing that sort of thing together? <laughs> I think that was the first time we it was it. yeah that that yeah. thing that you guys just saw I guess or yeah yeah it's our first uh you know you know whatever collaboration it's, yeah experience <laughs> experience wow. yeah collaboration maybe in that form you know oh uh, but, but uh, there, there was the life life thing with two other people yes right that's yeah. where we played together first. And yeah. That's when you got the idea yeah. to ask me for this. Exactly. We, um, we once played at the jazz festival. Um, you it's guys. Because I actually mentioned this 
I actually mentioned on the on the noise engineering uh, blog post we did. I actually mentioned that moment. That's so yeah. cool. And I mentioned it. I actually mentioned it to a bunch of people because <laughs> uh, you know we hear and this modular thing is something that I'm really passionate about and very excited. But it still f feels like something that I'm you know not completely involved in on a day to day. Cool. And also. The the idea of what do we connect you, you know what you can send to me yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I told you yeah I have plenty of room to receive yeah, 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 yeah. skates or uh, audio, audio yeah. and we just decided yeah let's do this 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 I think it was the symbol and the cake yeah the, the contact mic on the symbol that actually goes through my very yeah, small setup the but, gene thing. yeah and then this goes to you and then there's a kick drum that sends a trigger that you could use as as a trigger, but you also maybe it's on another take use more as like a follow action to something else, you know. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of uh, endless the 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 information that you can just feed to someone, and then that person can do whatever mm -hmm. they feel like it. Sure. Yeah, and, yeah. I think the kick drum. I I used it a little bit from time to time. I used your kick as a as a tap tempo <laughs> yeah right and then uh, but i moved away from that again and yeah, then yeah. again i'm not sure in if in this video yeah, or, I also I, exactly. i'm using it but <laughs> yeah yeah awesome well thank you guys so much for performing and doing this interview with us and taking the time and uh really appreciate it and thank you from the noise engineering team and uh yeah it's great to talk to you guys and have you on yeah thank you thank Thanks you so much yeah. for, for yeah, thank you. All right.
All right, we're here with Coffin Nakmar. Thank you so much for joining us and performing for the Noise Blast Hour. And doing yeah, absolutely. Video. How are you? I'm good. Uh, you know, still got uh, the interview butterflies. Oh, we'll be fine. We'll be yeah. all right. <laughs> um, so you're a yo-yo expert. Is that is there a term? I know you have used the term thrower um, as well. Yeah, uh, I use the term thrower as like that is the action of what you do to like start the process you know you're throwing it out, out of the hand uh -huh. um, but yeah uh, i design and produce and play with uh uh the yo-yo and i've been doing that for um maybe like seven eight years now mm -hmm. something close to that range uh -huh. yeah Awesome. And you're in Baltimore and that's where you grew up. Yes. Yeah. I've been in Baltimore uh, my entire life, except for like a brief period in which uh, I, I lived uh, in um, Sacramento. Oh, okay. Yeah. For like a brief period. Wow. Very different. Yeah, yeah a a absolutely. It felt like, uh, uh, like, Baltimore with palm trees because <laughs> I was there when it was still kind of cold. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it was interesting, but it was like a solid experience. You know, it was like a thing I had to do. Uh -huh. And it sounds like coming up in the area of Baltimore you were in, things were not very easy. Uh, no. Uh, Baltimore is I interesting to say the least. Um, there's like... Uh, uh, there's like a big arts co co uh, community here, but I'm not like, but I'm not very involved in, in it. There's, uh, there's a good amount of crime here. Um, you know, it's not always great, but I still, uh, you love the city. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, it just is uh, what it is, you know? And um, yeah, like any large American city, it's definitely complicated and yeah, has its various areas. Um, I've been reading a bit about the practice of redlining that had happened in the, a lot of American cities. Yeah, and it certainly shows here and through uh, like the, uh, uh, the gentrification and stuff has definitely like really proven it as like they will buy out entire communities. And then uh, you knock them down to then like build like uh, a, a Whole Foods, <laughs> you know, or something like that. And it's insane. Right. Well, what's fascinating to me about your story is that you've managed to transcend the circumstances that you came up in through a pretty unlikely, unlikely way. How, how did you come to discover the yo-yo? Um, so that is a great story. Uh, my friend Sean and I, uh, we would always like do art together and we were like a part of this like community of like the dancers and stuff uh, uh, growing up. But he and I in particular would like stay in pretty close contact and we'd skip school together to go get like art supplies or something. And then, and then we started skipping school to go to Toys R Us. Uh, I have a transformer collection that got really obsessive around me that time. So if I knew that product was going to drop in Toys R Us on a certain day, I was definitely skipping school to, to be at Toys R Us to go pick up uh, whatever I could. And on the way out, uh, I found uh, a Duncan Freehand, not this particular one, but it was just like... It was uh, a lime green one, you know, and just, you know, like typical toy store plastic packaging. Um, and I was just like, you know, I always thought that that was cool, but I didn't ever, like, get into it to try it. And so I played through, like, the end of high school. I want to say, like, like, two, like 2010 or so, um, I, I, I was really playing, like, avidly in high school. And then I broke the string and 
then you know that's kind of how you wear like it ends for uh, most people mm -hmm. um, and then when I when I f found it again after I think uh, uh, I moved from my parents house after high school um, like with some friends, I like got back into it. So this was in 2011, 12. Uh -huh. um, and I picked it back up. And I went back to the same Toys R Us that I would, you know, uh, you go to if I was uh, skiing up in school. Um, and I got some more. I started spreading them to friends. Uh, and then we found out about it on like, Ye uh, YouTube because prior to really like 2012 I was not on social uh, media uh, as I wasn't a very social person so it was like if I talked to someone it was in like direct communication uh -huh. yeah. and people can find your uh, oh yes yo online in uh, yeah it's uh, on Instagram at the o h y e s o u y o uh, and then Facebook, it's just uh, the brand's name. Or if they search uh, me on Facebook, they can find me. It's amazing to me what you've done with Yo-Yo. Not only your performances are fantastic to watch and your moves are amazing, but also just that it obviously seems, for lack of a better word, maybe spiritual or meditative to you and how... Uh, you've not only for you, but you've spread that to other people as well and brought, yeah. brought that joy and calm and, and whatever other things that brings to people. Maybe yeah, think um, a little bit about that. It's like patching a uh, modular. Uh, I, I, I find it to be like obscurely uh, your Zen. Uh, yeah. And it's just one of those things where I'm glad it's so small uh, like I can just have it on hand all the time and like I can take it anywhere and be in the moment for just a second. Um, you know, uh, you waiting in line is all, all, always fun. You know, that's always, a cool <laughs> thing. and that's like a thing people genuinely hate. And I'm just like, Oh dude, if I have to wait in line, that means I've got about however long until I get to where I'm going to just stand here and throw and, create some tricks and just zone out of it. You know, it's nice. That's um, brilliant. Yeah, spreading it to other people, I feel like was my, my, my like, my, like, tr like true growth of it. Uh, oh. Just, yeah, uh, giving it to other people as like a tool for expression or as like uh, a way to build a uh, community, um, mm -hmm. I think was uh, really my favorite part at the beginning of all of this because I didn't have like any of uh, 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 my own product. So I was going out getting stuff and just having it on hand so that if I came across a stranger who was in, in uh, in, interested in what in what I was doing, that I could just get, give it to someone and be like, "Well, here's uh, my contact information, and here's a throw, and if you want to hang out sometime and play, hit me up." You know, and I did that for years, and I still do it t today, anytime I can. You know, just that instant outreach is is something i feel like is a uh, uh you know it doesn't it exist in like the current of the world i just feel like you know like that type of uh communication between people is almost like a full, full, a foreign concept now I mean, it's, it's strange as as especially for um you know, like at, as a kid, uh, growing up and being social was super difficult. Um, I didn't, and like, still don't really like fit into specific circles of people. Or um, uh, 
I have a speech impediment that sometimes it makes socializing extremely difficult. Uh, I've definitely gotten better at it over time and, you know, uh, hours and hours of speech therapy, you know, things like that. But being able to bridge like genuine friendships with people and uh, essentially a toy being the common ground with like, me and other people, I find like totally fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. I wanted to ask about music. Music seems to be an important factor with all of this with you as well. And it sounds like you do your own music as well. Uh, yeah. So I, um, as far as like, um, performing Mm -hmm. with this uh it feels like without uh music it's just it 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 appears chaotic to me sometimes and when i play to music i have i i create tricks in a different way it's like the cadence or like uh the timbres and things uh how parts of a song progress uh the climax of songs and things like that or like sudden hits or like even the su- the super subtle parts of the music which is how i got into like um uh like uh uh, the modular stuff uh-huh. it's like the things that are su- super subtle that you barely pay attention to i can accentuate with how uh i move the toy you know and that is a whole like creative parallel sure. for me and it helps me just like further understand both of uh the mediums Mm-hmm. I had the Korg, like, uh, the bits kit, where, like, okay. you the little parts together. And that was, like, super strange to carry around and, like, a pack of uh, uh, your nine volts in case it died because it only takes uh, that power source. Um, so I had one of those for a couple months that, that I found on sale at a toy store, and I was like, Oh, this is pretty cool. Um, I didn't own a computer for about a decade. I just got one actually uh, recently. Uh, so until then, I hadn't really explored like synths or uh, using a DAW or anything of that sort. Um, so yeah, I, I had the bits kit and then I got tired of that. And then uh, a local store. Uh, called Brothers uh, Music. Uh, I went there uh, one day just like because I was passing them on the way to like the art store or something. And the girl there, uh, she is deep into sense. Like she had a, a, a Digitact and like some other like crazy gear that I hadn't ever heard of. And so that really opened. Uh, um, uh, my mind uh, up to like how this uh, your music that I enjoyed so much was like created and to have that tactile interface just um, just, just kind of brought like some other a- avenues of like how I, I create all into one like uh, in- encompassing thing like i tried to use at uh fl studio over a decade ago and i want to say i might have spent 20 minutes just like trying to create a pattern that i was happy with and i was like i hate this and i am not interested in creating this this music so i'll just uh appreciate it for what it is and when uh, I met Amber at the store and she showed me like the Volcas and uh, a couple like keyboard synths and stuff like that. I was like, Oh, this is, 
th 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 this could work. Um, so I sold the bits kit uh, to her store, and that was like seventy bucks towards a Volca. Uh, and I want to say I got like a Volca keys, and then uh, I got a Volca beats at guitar center for like seventy dollars that didn't have a box or a power supply or, or, or anything mm -hmm. and i i used volcas re really until i had a complete set of a new volcas uh just because i i, I was obsessing over like discuss like discovering all of the possible sounds that you that you could get from them and uh being able to like synchronize them all to each other was like an interesting thing and that was like the and the, that was like the closest thing that i could get to patching until the volca uh uh, uh the modular one had came out uh and then black friday of 2019 I think is when Teenage Engineering had their pocket operator 400. Yeah. And I already had a full set of pocket uh, operators. And I was like, well, this would be the logical uh, your next step. Uh, and then I bought that. And then I was like, okay, this is like that gear acquisition uh, syndrome that everyone's always talking <laughs> about. And, I, and so when I got that and I had a, uh, the modular format kind of um, I sold all of the Volcas, all of the pocket operators. And then I just had uh, 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 the Novation circuit, the circuit uh, Yamano station and the pocket operator 400, which I had custom built a case for um, out of like acrylic. So everything was like transparent. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, then I gave all of my pocket operator 400 stuff to a friend for like 400 bucks. And when you guys had a black Friday sale, I got Vox did, 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 uh, digitalis at, at mm -hmm. uh, I got filter and something else from you guys. And I think a t-shirt, uh, and then that really like start, start, started me into, a. The, uh, the modular format yeah. and I just had the basics but being able to use like four or five like relatively straightforward uh, uh, um, uh, modules and just like getting like really interesting textures before I could even like sequence them right you know? Uh, Can people find your music out out there in the world? Or are you? Or um, I've posted a few pieces on YouTube, and occasionally I'll post like a clip of something I'm doing on a, my like Facebook story. Uh -huh. uh, I've not r recorded too many pieces, but I'm trying to uh, uh, work on that currently. Yeah, uh, I really. Um, want to get into scoring for like games and film uh d d disaster piece i'm not sure if you're familiar with his work no uh but he did the soundtrack for an indie game called hyper light drifter mm -hmm. oh okay, i've heard of this okay yeah and i was obsessed with the, the the art style of that game and I, I like I, I would uh, watch the trailer just to see like the visuals paired with uh, the music that that he did well thank you so much for joining us for an interview and doing a performance for us this is Kafan Nakmar and we'll try to get some links yeah. down uh, below the stream here for people to check you out elsewise and uh Best of luck to you with your new endeavors with the yo-yos and your company, Oh Yes Yo, and your music and your new kid and everything yeah, that's going thank on. Thank you so much. And thank you. Yeah. Uh, no, dude, thank you guys. Uh, you know, I'm really glad to have had the opportunity to, to, to do something for like a different uh, uh, community of people. Yeah. Sure. So,
that's always interesting. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was great Thanks talking to you. Well, all right. Thus concludes the fifth installment of the Noise Blast Hour from Noise Engineering. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please go down and hit the old thumbs up like button and feel free to subscribe so you're aware of when these are happening. Uh, thank you to Stephen and Chris for having me, Sean Jimerson, as your host. Thank you, Marcus, for running the technical aspects of the Noise Blast Hour. Thank you to our guests. Uh, we had Arthur Natek, Olan, and Coffin Nakmar. Thanks so much. And thank you for joining us for the live stream or the archive, as the case may be. And we will see you, hopefully, for Noise Blast Hour number six. Take care. <laughs>